Hey guys, this is Milo back with another video and today I'm going to show you how to laminate a palm swell on an axe handle. This is a great thing to know how to do because you can make an axe handle with a thin board but still have a nice palm swell and that saves wood, it saves time, and it also looks pretty good. Also, throughout this entire process, I only use hand tools which is great because it's cheap and it's very beginner friendly. So for the materials you need, it's very simple. All you need is wood. I'm using a pre-made axe handle and a black walnut slab, but if you want to make your own handle, then you'll just need hickory or whatever wood you want to use. And right now is where all the fun begins. I'm going to be making the scales, which is the slabs of wood I will be gluing. And I go for about 3 inches long, but this is really up to personal preference. And if you want inspiration, you can join a Facebook group called Axe Addicts. And there's a lot of people that do laminations on there and a lot of other very talented work. So I'm going to be cutting this with a handsaw. This one in particular is a Japanese handsaw, and I like it a lot because it has a thin kerf, and it has a cross cut on one side and a rip cut on the other side. So it's a very versatile tool, it's cheap, and I'll have the link to it in the description down below with my Amazon affiliate links. The first cut I do determines the length of the scales, and this doesn't have to be too square or perfect because I will be trimming off the end of the handle and rasping it, but when I cut it down the middle, that needs to be perfectly symmetrical and square because the surface has to be flat for it to glue to the handle properly and I don't want it getting asymmetrical at all. So to ensure this, I draw a couple of lines first to know where the midpoint is and I really take my time with sawing this. I'm not an experienced woodworker by any means. I've made an axe handle before and I thin axe handles but I've only done three laminations so far but they've all turned out fine uh, just because I take my time. This is what the two halves of black walnut looks like and it turned out well. Of course, if you had a bandsaw and a jig or some other way of doing it, it would be easier and you could make a lot more of these, but um, if you don't have that many tools, I'm just showing that it's totally doable to do it this way. Now it is time to flatten both sides of the axe handle and I use a shinto rasp and a card scraper to do this. You actually can skip this step if you're making your own axe handle from a board because it's already flat on both sides but since I'm using a store bought axe handle it already has a palm swell so I need to completely remove that and making these surfaces by hand is actually really difficult because I need to ensure everything is perfectly flat, same as the scales I made. So when you're doing this, I recommend clamping the axe handle down and using very long and full strokes with your rasp. So you're removing an equal amount of material on each side of the palm swell. And if you accidentally create high and low spots, then the glue won't hold in those areas. Another thing is you need to make sure you're square so that you aren't slanting off in one direction. I kind of start to make this mistake so I make sure everything is flat with my card scraper because it's a straight edge. And then when I realized I was creating high spots and slanting off a little bit, I was counteracting that by just focusing in on the high spots until it matched the low spots. And when I figured out everything was perfect, I used my card scraper to finish it off because it leaves a cleaner finish than the rasp and it has more surface area which helps with removing all of the inconsistencies. And it's almost time to glue the scales on, but before I do that, I'm just gonna make sure once again that everything is flat. I know I'm saying that a lot, but that's pretty much what this entire step is all about. And thank God I'm done with flattening because that probably is the most annoying step out of all of this. I'm now ready to figure out where I want my scales to go, so I'm just drawing a line and I'm gonna glue it up now. So I'm using tight bond wood glue. People recommend this tier three stuff because that holds stronger and it's water resistant. I'm just using their basic wood glue, but once I run out of this, I will buy the tier three. And now that I'm done spreading the glue around and attaching the scales so that they are symmetrical on each side, I'm clamping it. And I just use my vise for this, but you can also use bar clamps. And I left this overnight to dry. Now you can see I have tons of excess wood around the palm swell. So this step is all about just cutting it off so that it's flushed. 
One thing that I forgot to mention earlier is I'm doing this lamination because the palm swell was actually crooked on this handle and it was really small. You can see it looks like I took off too much material on one side than the other, but really that was just me fixing this problem. And this does create some complications that you wouldn't run into with a normal lamination job because I need to figure out how to make this symmetrical again. And I determined this isn't completely possible because if I remove more material on one side than the other, then the scales will become lopsided. But as this tutorial continues, you guys will see how I figured this out. And now it is time to rough shape the palm swell. To do this, I'm using two rasps. One is a very coarse cabinet maker's half round rasp, and the other one is a four in one small rasp. So when rough shaping this, you first want to flatten all of the sides and make sure that the transitions of the scales lines up with the transitions of the handle. And it's important to do this first because if you try rounding it off, then it's gonna become really overwhelming and it's gonna be hard to keep everything lined up well. Another thing I do is I chamfer the scales before I start removing material and that ensures that I won't rip off any material. I have the bottom flattened and you can really see how this is asymmetrical. At this stage, I was really worried that I wouldn't be able to fix this, so I forget about it and I start flattening the front of the handle. And then I come in at an angle and chamfer it down to match the curves of the handle. It's important during this step to create angles on each side that are the same. And I have them the same, but there's still a gap on one side because it's asymmetrical. So I need to continue removing more material. And to make sure that this is symmetrical, all you gotta do is look down the handle and see with your own eyes, and if it looks a little bit off to you, then you know you need to remove more material on one side than the other. Now I have the front all figured out, so I'm making the transitions on the side. I used a pencil to draw the angle of the transition, but this is mostly just a guide to work off of. It makes it so I can take off a lot of material fast, and everything is still symmetrical, but then I go in with my smaller rasp and I kind of scoop it out so that the palm swell hooks onto your hand better. I now have each face flattened and they're at the angles that I want them to be at so I can start rounding everything together. But before doing that, I would recommend making it octagonal like you see in this video right now because it makes it easier to blend everything together because we're starting off with such a boxy shape and I'm using my finer rasp to do this work because the larger cabinet maker's rasp will just rip off way too much material. And one thing to focus on is proper rasp technique. You can see how I'm moving my body with the rasp and I'm doing one stroke and then slightly changing my angle and then doing another and slightly changing my angle and I'm just going back and forth with this motion so that each side is completely matched up and I'm not spending more time on one side than the other. And now that everything is rounded together, you can see everything looks way more symmetrical than it did before. This is partially because I took more material off on one side than the other in the front but I also rounded it all together and since it has more of a fluid shape, it kind of tricks the eye into seeming more symmetrical than it actually is. And at this stage, now that I have everything rounded over and blended together, I'm almost done. All I have to do is sand it now. I don't recommend going too high of a grit on the palm swell because then it'll be too slippery. I forget exactly what grids I used for this, but I went from 3M's coarse to medium to fine. Looking back on it, I would have only gone up to medium because that's probably as smooth as you need it to be. And with sanding, you also want to continue following the curvature of the handle and sanding an equal amount on each side. With this stage, I'd also definitely recommend using a hand sander because it has more surface area and it gives you more control over how you sand it. And I can't forget to mention that it's way more comfortable to hold a hand sander than just having sandpaper in your hand. And this is what the final product looks like. It's ready to be oiled and I'm using Danish oil, but linseed oil works fine. And look at that contrast in the black walnut. That's one reason why I love using black walnut for this. I actually stopped using it for wedges because it's too hard and it doesn't compress enough. But thankfully the palm swell can be made out of any kind of wood you really want it to be made from. And this is what the final result looks like. I'm really happy with how it looks, especially since the handle was asymmetrical and I had to fix that. That really added an extra layer of complication. And this whole process probably took about five to six hours. That is a very long time, but I did it all with hand tools and you guys can see that it's possible and doable. So if you guys like this video, then please feel free to like and subscribe. It means a lot to me and peace out.